So as a lot of you guys probably already know, Indiana is in the northern part of the country and we fought with the north, with the Union during the Civil War. Uh, we've always been a place that prides itself in uh, racial equality. But today I'm at Jimmy Nash Park for my Explore Indiana adventure hike. And this uh, park is in Martinsville, Indiana. And this town actually has a reputation of racism. But coming here a few times and doing my research on the history of this place, I found that the vast majority of people that live here are intolerant. And I'm proud of them for that. I'll tell you guys why once we get this hot hike going on. Let's go. So the definition of intolerance is the unwillingness to accept views, beliefs, and behaviors that differ from one's own. And so when we're talking about racism and hatred, it's not an intolerance thing, it's an ignorance thing. Usually people that are racist believe that their race is superior and other races are inferior, which is ignorant. So it's, I don't think that's intolerance at all. I think people use the word intolerance when they're talking about racism because they're trying to be PC or uh, politically correct, correct and try to sugarcoat it. And it's plain wrong if you ask me. But when I say the people here are intolerant, what I mean is they will not tolerate the hatred and ignorance. They are intolerant to the racism. The majority of people here are good people. So the racist history of this place actually goes back to when the Ku Klux Klan tried to, and they failed to, establish um, Indiana as part of their headquarters. And this is where they headquartered at in Indiana. It was Martinsville, Indiana. Um, and so there were a lot of people here that joined. Um, and it is believed that it may have been one of the hotbeds of the country. There may have been more Ku Klux Klan members here at one time than there were anywhere else. But even then at the height, the population of Martinsville and Morgan County, this whole county really, uh, only 27% of them agreed with the Ku Klux Klan. In fact, in 1967, the Ku Klux Klan had tried to have a parade through town here, and the mayor was able to squash it by telling the residents beforehand to ignore it and don't attend, and they had another activity at another place in town to let people come and enjoy the day without even being near it, and it ended up squashing the whole thing. I don't think the Ku Klux Klan even went on with their parade. But it was in 1968 when things got really bad and they really got the reputation of a racist town. Uh, a young African-American woman, about 20 years old, was selling encyclopedias door to door here in town and she was stabbed to death with a screwdriver. Although it was very clear that it was a racially motivated attack and murder, a white couple tried to help her, uh, Don and Norma Neal. And the Neals got a lot of slack for it after that. The, um, few bad apples decided to send some threats and things, but they, they, stay, they stayed fighting. They still do to this day. In fact, they're trying to erect a memorial here in town. And the, in 2014, the, the county commissioner approved it and then got, they got some blowback and some people upset and they backed out quickly. And so they're still looking for a place to put that memorial. So that crime went unsolved for 33 years. But like I said, the good people in this town, they stood up once again and they finally got their guy. Uh, in 2002, an arrest was made and they know they got the right guy, but he didn't have to stand trial because he died of cancer before he actually went to trial. But his daughter was actually one of the ones that turned him in and she was seven years old and witnessed the crime from the car and was able to give the police details that the public didn't know about. So they know they had their man, but there's a second person that's still at large and they're not gonna stop the hunt until they find this guy. 
And that's what I mean about the people in this town being intolerant to the hatred. I mean, they've got a long history of fighting against racism for years and years. You go way back to when this town had artisanal spas. It was real popular for mineral springs. And back then they called them sanitariums. And they had a lot of them here. People would come from miles around. And they actually had the first all black sanitarium here. And matter of fact, there was a man named uh, Albert Merritt. And he was an African American. He came to work at the spas and ended up staying here for the rest of his life over 40 years and started the first boys club. And the town honors him by naming a park, Merritt Park, here in town. So usually I end these videos by asking you guys to give me a thumbs up or a high five or maybe subscribe. And this time I'm gonna ask something a little different of you guys. I want you guys to let the county commissioner know that you want them to put that memorial up for Carol Jenkins. The Neals are still trying to do it. They're, find, they're trying to find a spot for it and trying to get approval for it. And the, the few people that are fighting it are uh, making enough noise that we need to make more noise. So down in the description below, there's a link to a message board for the county commissioner. If you want to leave a message on the message board, that's probably the easiest way to do it. Or if you like to write letters, here's an address. Hell, here's a uh, email address from a random guy that works there. Let him know. But I appreciate you guys coming along with me on my adventure hike today and uh, hearing a little bit about Martinsville. And if you guys like this video, you know what to do. We'll see you guys all next time. Peace.